yours truly is here. So we're going to talk about setting up your environment for Power Platform UX UI animations. Who am I? Just in case you don't know, my name is David Warner. Uh, I am a fan of the community, work in the community, and work at Microsoft. But let's jump into exactly what we're going to talk about today. The best investment is in the tools of one's own trade, which means that as we are setting up to use animations within our Power Platform, specifically Power Apps, we need some tools. We want to get that utility belt full of tools that are going to be useful for us to be able to create some cool animations, right? So the first thing is we're going to want an editor, maybe a code editor. We're going to talk about VS Code today. Uh, and then we're going to step that tool belt up with even more cool tools uh, and toys that make it even easier for us uh, to be able to implement some of the cool features that we want. And then we're going to see what is next. OK, so let's first start out with what exactly it is that we're going to use. VS Code, or otherwise known as Visual Studio Code, uh, is a de facto Microsoft provided free code editor for a variety of things. And when I say a variety, I mean not even code related things like editing your documents and stuff like that is a really cool way that Hugo Bernier has shared some really cool things and sharing is caring on how to do. Today, we're going to show how to utilize it for things like SVGs, because we know that within Power Apps, SVGs are a wonderful opportunity for us to add some flair and some interactive uh, animations to our experience within uh, our Power Apps. OK, so let's start out by taking a look. I'm going to bring up uh, VS Code here for us, and we're going to take a little bit of a journey on it, just in case you've not seen it before. So what you're looking at is VS Code. I've just opened it up, if you will. Uh, and you've got maybe some colors that you're like, wait, what's going on? This is all purple and orange. Well, I don't want that. Don't worry. It's actually extendable. You can customize it. That's one of the cool features of uh, VS Code or Visual Studio Code is that you can customize it with color themes and all that. So as you see me using this dark mode with a little bit of a Warner Digital or David Warner flair to it, that's just something I set up that makes me feel a little bit more happy and comfortable. And you can do the same. So definitely take advantage of these things. We're going to start out with what files we're working with today, right? So I've got a few things. We've got a sample HTML we're going to start out with. And then we've got a snowman in front of the fire. OK, so what does that look like? Let's set the context for that first. Right, So this is an SVG file that I had set up and uh, customized a little bit. I got my nice little purple scarf, orange fire going on. My little uh, orange buttons are there for me. And we're going to see how to take advantage of editing this and understanding it within the scope of VS Code and using that as our environment to develop in. Now, you could obviously use a whole bunch of other tools. CodePen is one. Uh, I personally like VS Code because it provides some extendability. It provides some cool ways for us to do more than it comes with out of the box. So let's start with what that looks like. I'm going to open up my sample HTML. And this is just a basic thing, right? I've really just literally got header and, and uh, paragraph tag, right? So uh, we're, we're not focused too much on this. And I know in a low code world, we're not looking to write a lot of code or work with a lot of syntax, and that's OK. Uh, but I want to give you a little bit of a tour around the way that you navigate within this space, right? So the first thing is I've got that. Now, I, I want to be able to preview my HTML as I'm starting to work with SVGs. Uh, and I noticed that there's some some icons up here in the right uh, that make it look like, hey, that's that's kind of, you know, looks like it's got a, a little bit of a dual pane there that I can utilize. But what it does is it actually just separates it. So I could do comparison between two files, not exactly what I'm looking for. Uh, but what VS Code offers is what's called extensions. Uh, and that's that this little button over here on the left in the toolbar called extensions. Think of them as like plugins that Microsoft has provided, the community has provided, that allows us to add functionality to VS Code to allow us to do more, right? So I want to be able to preview my HTML. And so I know for a fact offhand that there is something called Live Preview that Microsoft provides, right? Pretty cool. So when you open that, you see that you got live preview. Now, I've already installed it. I've got it disabled right now. Uh, but I'm going to enable it. And if you have not installed it, then yours will say install. And it's absolutely free. So I'm going to enable it. Now it's enabled. If I go back to my sample HTML, you'll notice up here in the right, uh, I now have an additional icon with a little magnifying glass. So when I click that, what a bing. I actually am now seeing a preview. What it's done is it's very quickly created for me a live web server. Just local host being able to process and see my code pretty cool okay great so what else can i do well what are the benefits of using vs code it comes with things called intellisense so what it means is it understands what file i'm in so i can come into my paragraph tag and i can come in and say hey i want to do a style with css and we saw css in yesterday's demo and if you didn't watch that video we'll provide links but uh css allows us to change the look and feel of our solution right so i'm going to say that i'm going to say color now it sees that i've got that and i could say okay cool i want to do orange and you'll notice that is pre-populating a whole bunch of stuff for me. And that's pretty slick, right? So uh, 
uh, I can come in and I can say orange. Uh, and now immediately I'm seeing that update to my first paragraph, right? So it's just providing us an understanding. Now, is, is that cool? Is that useful? Yeah, but check this out. This is even better. As I hover over that color, I get a little pop-up that gives me what the RGB value is for it. Well, that's not bad. Uh, and then is it interactive? You betcha because I can then change this to say, I wanna make it a nice little purple. And then uh, bam, you see that immediately it's already taken on the color that I've, I've done there, which is pretty slick, right? So if I come in here and click that again, I can also click on the little banner. Let's say I need the hex value instead. I can click on that and I can just cycle through the different ways in which a color property uh, can be identified. I've got the HSL, HWB, back to RGB. If I wanted to adjust the transparency for it, look at that. I just make that change. And what's happening is it adds that fourth property onto the RGB with an A, which stands for alpha, which means that this has transparency. This comes in handy when we start looking at SVGs and videos, maybe not so much for text and that's okay, but the value and the interactive property here is the same, right? Pretty cool. Okay, well, what else do we got? Uh, we have that SVG. So I'm gonna close this preview and we know we've got that fire, snow fire, snowman fire SVG. So I'm gonna open that up. And what's happening is now it just looks like plain text, right? I'm able to also kind of see the whole vi uh, file and document over here on the right. So I can actually go down, but man, that's just white and black. I don't really see any value there. It's not fully understanding what an SVG is. And I would like to actually preview the SVG. We see that the preview is no longer there, right? So I could do a couple things. I could copy and paste this, go back to my HTML, and paste that in. And now we see the color coding has come in. I can preview it and I see a portion of my SVG. It's bigger than the space that's available here. Not exactly what I want. I wanna be able to work with the SVG directly. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna go back to my extension store. I'm gonna search for SVG and I'm gonna find that there is an SVG woo -woo, extension for me to use, right? Pretty cool. So uh, I'm gonna open that up. Oh, we got it installed, but you would install it. I'm gonna enable it. And now when I go back to my SVG, I now have some IntelliSense going on, which is pretty cool, right? So I don't need to go copy it into HTML. I can if I want to, but I can work directly with the HTML or with the SVG, excuse me. Uh, and you'll notice, wow, a preview comes back. So what happens now? Well, I'm gonna gain some, a little bit more screen real estate, open, the, uh, close that and I'm going to now edit it. Well, holy cow, now this is more than just a preview. I seem to have a toolbar up here, which is pretty slick, right? So it does a variety of things. I could change the way in which my background is looking, right? So I can change that around if I want to. Uh, I've got some rulers if I need to be able to measure. Uh, I'm able to see it in an image property. I'm able to select the CSS. Uh, I'm able to export it as a ping. So if I needed to export this as a ping, uh, I'm able to get some crosshairs here, right? So you kind of see that crosshair there if you need to check alignment on some things. One of my coolest and favorite features here though is the ability to interact, right? So I can interact with this SVG because if you notice SVGs over here, it, it's, a, it's a bunch of math, everybody. And, and it looks really ugly and no one's writing this from heart. Maybe Chris can't could because the guy's amazing when he writes list formatting and does that kind of stuff. But I think mere mortals like myself, I'm not really gonna be writing this from scratch. I'm going to be editing an existing file. And if you, if you don't have like Illustrator or something like that, you might wanna work within this space because you're gonna still take this code and you're gonna move it into Power Apps, right? So for example, check this out. Uh, I am going to work with my Code Interactive. And as I hover over my variety of properties here, you'll notice there's a little border that is outlining that. Well, what does that mean? It means I can click it and what's happened is over in my code, it's a little dark on my theme, but you can see that it's outlined it and it's selected the line where that is located at, right? So I'm gonna go in there, I am going to turn on word wrap and we can see, I'll click it again. So there we go. Uh, I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna do a fill uh, on this. And uh, we can see that it also is giving us IntelliSense there too, right? So pretty cool. So uh, I'm gonna go uh, orange. And we see now IntelliSense has also come up and it's changed. 
for me right then there, right? So I've got orange now. Uh, and if I want to change some of those properties, I can do that, right? Same format. I can come in here and I can say, you know, I want to make it a nice pink or something else. So we get that cool interactive ability with the SVG. Uh, we're also able to see what some of these things mean, right? So what's happening is as I hover over that, it tells me what that element is. So we've got a learning opportunity here as well, right? And it gives me a reference uh, point, which is a URL to learn more about that individual path or element within the SVG. Okay, so some pretty pretty cool ways, right? These are ways that we're setting up our environment, setting up our tool belt. Now, what I'm gonna do uh, is I am going to remove that, take it back to normal. The last piece that I wanna show you that's more setting up the what's next. Again, we're gonna cover in future iterations. I'm gonna start a series on these calls for SVG animation, interactive opportunities within Power Apps. Of course, we wanna be able to animate, right? So look at my fire here. I've got little elements that I can actually interact with in individually, right? So I've got the little white flames, the orange flame, the dark orange flame. Uh, what I've done is I've seen, uh, or I've, I've created some simple animation here uh, that are using IDs. And so if I go down to, I've kind of commented out a few just by adding a name. And now what's happening is if I just turn on my animation, it's subtle, but look, it adds a little bit of interactive feeling. It adds some depth to my SVG. Now, of course, this is just a fun way of providing exposure to this, uh, but there are very practical ways in which we can implement this in a business use case within Power Apps. And so we're gonna continue to go through a series here of utilizing VS Code, other component opportunities within Power Apps, features and functionality that is gonna allow you to implement a lot of this stuff in a fun, fun way. Okay, so let's go back to our chat or our uh, slides and we'll wrap it up here. So again, a Visual Studio Code, uh, we've got the live preview, right? Which I showed you, gives you the ability to see all that, kind of host the local server on your workspace. We've got our SVG extension, which allows you to interact with that SVG, right? So where does he get all those wonderful toys? Again, utilize these AKAs, we'll put them in the chat, we'll share them with everybody, uh, and you'll be able to take advantage. Now, what is next, right? So uh, I am going to be doing more demos and videos on this topic here, uh, likely in combination with some others in the community. I love the co-presentation opportunities. Uh, we're going to go over some additional SVG animation properties and techniques that are available within Power Apps. Now, I mentioned those extensions, right? The live preview extension, the SVG extension. Well, guess what? I'm gonna create one that is specifically for Power Platform animation. So be on the lookout because what it's going to do is it's gonna give you some options and context menu, and it's gonna give you some tools that you can utilize specifically just for converting your SVGs for use in Power App. So it's gonna be nice, quick tools and uh, ways in which you can limit and, and cut down the time needed to sometimes convert and get those things into Power Apps. Uh, and then I'm gonna be creating additionally some Power App component libraries for some tools that we'll share within the community samples. So lots and lots Lots of cool stuff coming up. Thank you again for staying extra. I know we went long. I appreciate everybody's patience and uh, excited to see what we're going to do next.